And welcome back guys to another episode of The Daily Show. Today's episode is for Tuesday, July, July 13. 13. Uh, I trust, we trust you guys had a nice weekend. So, I mean, it's Tuesday. But you know what, I haven't, I haven't said this for a long time, so I'm just going to say it. Uh, the show is about interesting facts and trivia for everyone's daily knowledge. I kind of miss saying that. Anyways, we're going to run through our observances today. Let's start oh, with... I'm, I'm Joe, by the way. Oh, hi, Joe. I don't need to introduce you. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should put J- JR and Joe already as host. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, right. All right, first up, we got Barbershop Music Appreciation Day. Uh, okay, so again, it's barbershop music, not just the barbershop itself. Uh, Today is a day to relax and enjoy the sweet voices of the sweet Adelites or a barbershop quartet. Quartet means yeah. four. Four, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, f- like a four-member group. Mm. So if we talk about a little bit of history of the uh, barbershop music itself, or at least the how the observance uh, started. You know, um, Edna May Anderson of Tulsa, Oklahoma, invited some women to her home to sing uh-huh. uh, in 1945, of course, of, of this day. Um, their husbands were members of the... Uh, this is going to be a pretty long name. Society for the uh, Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America. But you can always uh, abbreviate it to S-P-E-B-S-Q-S-A. Spebs... Spebs... No, it, will, it won't work that way. No. But yeah, it's a pretty long name. Yeah. So the ladies wanted to participate in the singing, fun, and enjoyment. Enjoyment. And then on that evening, the Sweet Adelines were born. Uh, the group later became Sweet Adelines International. So they went international, pretty cool. Mm. Uh, which now boasts hundreds of groups and thousands for members. Now, if we go back to, or not go back, if we go to the definition of the barber shop music, again, it's a type of music, you know, like uh, rock, like a... Uh, Actually, it's not a genre. It's more of a style. It's more of a style on how people perform this, uh, the the uh, well, the style, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a form or a style of a cappella. Are you it familiar is. with a cappella? It's like uh, you sing without like instruments, like anything. An accompanied vocal music, yes. Yeah, just so your music voice. is your own voice. Just the yeah. voice. So if you need the beat, mm-hmm. someone's going to do the beat through their mouth. Uh, beatboxing. Uh, yeah, beatboxing, yeah. yeah. Uh, but for the uh, barbershop music style, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's uniquely known for its four-part chord. Meaning, first of all, right, we were talking about the quartet, right? And those members, each member of the uh, quartet will have a uh, melody right. to play. You know, there's going to be a um, uh, the lead the lead, yeah. The lead, yeah. That will have the, of the course, the main melody, main focus, and then there's going to be a tenor. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that uh, tenor is like a, a melody harmonizes. Th- that harmonizes the lead, yeah. Right. Uh huh. And then the bass. The bass mm-hmm. is like the low voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have the baritone that completes the chord. So they uh, all work together. They all work together, and uh, that's pretty much like the concept of of. I would say, if not all most of these mus- musical instruments like if you play a guitar mm-hmm. you use uh, pretty much like your four fingers right 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 you if you use a piano you pretty much use pretty much all your fingers but the average would be like three to four keys that you're chord, yeah. that you're uh, uh, pressing when you play a chord so it I mean since it's all about music then the uh, the, the pattern or the uh, concept is applicable mm. even to you know like a, a four-man group or uh, a band um, so, anyways, some of the famous barbershop quartets that you may know, and if we haven't uh, mentioned it here, maybe you can give us more uh, famous groups that you guys know. Uh, but so far, the ones that uh, we're going to be mentioning will be the Bru- Bluegrass Student Union, uh, Boston, Boston Common, and Chicago News. Mm. So, if you guys are interested and uh, haven't really heard barbershop music, maybe today, is a good introduction for you guys, right? And just try it. You know, it's it's relaxing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's relaxing. So. Yeah. You know what else is relaxing? Candy. Not candy. Oh. 
Beans and Franks Day, which is funny because in our country we call it Franks and Beans. But I guess Beans and Franks works too. Is it Beans and Franks? I thought it's always been Frank and Beans. Well, apparently some places they call it Beans and Franks. That's not right. Well, <laughs> that doesn't why? sound right. That doesn't sound right. And by the way, you can't just say Franks and Beans because there's a lot of beans. It should have an S. So it's Franks and Beans. Now, pork and beans is different because you get, only get one slice of pork. Oh, right, right. So, and it's it's quite a challenge to find that pork in the uh, sure. bowl, of, bowl of beans. But yes, today we, um, today, today's observance encourages us to make our favorite recipe during National Hot Dog Month, which is happening in July. Uh, this is a simple recipe as you guys can see pretty obvious right there is pretty much the Franks and the beans Right Franks is like a uh, sausage, right? Sausage. Yes. Uh, that's why they're also called beanie weenies, mm. you know uh, they, Again, they're kind of similar to pork and beans. The difference is instead of using pork you use Franks or, be right, or right, right. Uh, Hot dogs sausages. Yeah, there you go um, Baked beans became popular during the Civil War in the United States they would later become one of the first canned convenience foods in the market in the 1800s or 1890s rather. Um, as a result, baked beans became staple uh, of the chuck wagon. Um, however, it is unknown when adding franks to the beans became culinary technique. But I, I mean, think because like they just want to add like a different uh, well, pretty contrasting much. flavor. Yeah, yeah. Get some more protein in there. I don't think it's really relevant to know when it when. Franks were added in the beans. No, no, it's like just a, one of those food. It's one of those uh, kitchen inventions. Yeah, things. yeah. Uh huh. Plus, uh, a lot of these foods that are pretty simple, uh -huh. pretty much originated from uh, lack of ingredients. So you kind of like look for something to add. It's like whatever you have in your leftover in the fridge. Exactly, exactly. Toss it, in. it may not sound that pleasant, it's but like hey, a, I mean. Was it a casserole, something like that? Yeah. yeah uh huh. Yeah. But. I'm just saying, at least you're not wasting food, right? No, no, you're no, being you're creative not. at the same time, uh, not wasting any food. Yes. Not being delicious. Uh, and then the Franks. Mm. I don't know if you guys are wondering why the, uh, the hot dogs can also be called Franks. Well, because Franks or Frank Furter. Furters. Frank Furters. Yeah. Uh, of course, they're made of either beef, beef pork, or, or sometimes chicken now too, right? Or a combination of both or any. Uh, it came from Frank Furter, which... Uh, came from the fact that the popular hot dog like sausage was originally made in Frankfurt, Frankfurt Germany Germany there we go so before adding them to the beans the Franks were sliced into bite size because you know you want to keep the size or the, give the portion serving the size scoop, serving portion the scoop size so yeah. you have a little bit of a uh, beans a little bit of uh, the Frankfurt something you can scoop instead of like pork yeah exactly because like you don't want to have the whole sausage you have to bite it and scoop of beans yeah so, size, yeah. so for today, uh, if your diet allows, uh, go ahead and uh, try some uh, beans and franks or Frank franks and beans. beans. I wonder who, which country calls it beans and franks. To be fair, though, it's 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 interchangeable. Interchangeable, yeah. But I I grew up uh, calling it franks and beans. I call it franks and beans. I think the the canned ones too are called frank and beans. Franks like and beans. The main focus is the protein, which is the meat, rather than you know the beans. Yes. Yeah. So regardless of how you say it, um, you know, we can all agree it's a good dish. Simple yet good dish. And another good thing that happened throughout the history of mankind. Best food ever. <laughs> would you call it best food ever? Yeah, I would probably, I'll eat this. Wow. Well, I mean, yes, you're definitely going to eat this. So French Friday, National French Friday, which is actually a good side for National Hot Dog Month. Oh, yes. Yeah, That's but true. usually, I guess here, it's burger, paired with burgers. You know, you can have a chili cheese fries, put some little frankfurters in there. Yeah. Boom. I did. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't thought about that. That's a, that's quite a that's new uh, invention. Hey, oh, the... it's mine. It's mine. You guys, I'll take my recipe. All right. Try to, uh, what do you call this? Patent it. Patent it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, again, today we celebrate this awesome snack or side, uh, especially at fast food restaurants. How this is a snack. There's no way you can... Oh, the... Like, uh, I eat it as a snack sometimes. There's no way it's a snack. You eat like one or two, you eat the whole thing. Well, yeah, it is a snack. That's not a snack. <laughs> like a whole bunch of snack. Yeah. You know, sometimes uh, whenever I watch movie with my wife at home, uh, instead of eating popcorn, we got the uh, 
We got the fries. Oh, uh, you should eat popcorn because fries is way too much. But I don't know, just for a change. That's why I call it like a snack too. You know, uh, and sometimes you can buy a smaller one too, just like a smaller one. You're, you're eating a lot of food then. Uh, yeah, I would say. To be fair, though, we air fry it because we got an air fryer. We got like a basket of French fry, right? Oh well, the air fryer is just small, so it's it's good for like a, a you enough think that's serving. Enough? That's, you think that's enough to last for like an hour and a half movie? No way. You no, might, no, you probably eat it in like a I, 10 well, minutes. I I don't. I don't eat at the whole length of the movie, so when when it's done, then I'm just like drinking or, you know, I'm drinking water or just making finishing more fries. the movie. You're making more fries. No, because you have to stand up and then now I have you to pause the up. movie. You stand up, you make more fries. Well, I don't. No, I didn't do that. So how about this? What kind of fries do you like? Do you like those steak fries? Do you like I those, like the uh, curly ones. Curly it's fries. My main favorite curly ones. There's only two types, right? No, there's oh, there's Chris Cut. Is Chris that Cut? That's like the waffle ones. The waffle ones, yeah. There you go. Ah, uh, they're still considered French fry, guys. Yeah. So. Then the thing about that is you can, you can really uh, what do you call it? Fancy up the game by spicing it up. You have Cajun spices. You have different dipping sauces. Oh well, we're gonna have to talk about that because we can't talk about French fries without talking about condiments and dips and spices, right? Right. 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 Um, again, the spices is more like a. To make it fancier, but mm -hmm. dips always, always have dips on fries. I mean, I, 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 I don't know anyone eating French fries without dips. I there should be at least ketchup in there. No, you have. To. Or may oh, I know you don't have to, but you know what? You know what? You can't eat I fries without any uh, condiment. What? Chili cheese fries. Well, the chili is already kind of like a condiment. It's not a condiment. Yeah. Well, that's true. But what I'm saying, it's like because it's not, it, it doesn't make your fries dry. It's already there, so I mean that basically complements the fries. Okay, okay. But yeah, chili cheese fries is good because you got the cheese, melted cheese, and the chili in there. Um, but what are the common ones? Common dips. Ketchup. ketchup. Come on, ketchup. Ranch, barbecue sauce, mayonnaise, mayonnaise. But sometimes I'm, or most of the time, I mix mayon and mayonnaise and ketchup. You know they have a bottle of honey meat? mustard. Oh, you know they have a bottle of like pre mix ketchup mm -hmm. and mayonnaise? It's called Thousand Island? No, Thousand Island is different. It's ketchup and mayonnaise, what's that? No, about? but then you need a little bit of pickles in there. Ah. If it's just strictly ketchup and mayo, it's like mayo chop or something, yeah. Mayo chop? Heinz make it already. It's pre mixed. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's so hard about mixing the two. Oh. I don't I don't really find it inconvenient. Soy sauce, I like dipping soy sauce. Really? No. <laughs> hey, I, was, I got I was surprised. Thinking, I was you got me there. You got me there. For like what? I was thinking of different sauces, like soy sauce is one. I was like, I never seen anyone. Maybe, maybe some kind of like Asian fusion restaurant. They might. No, have. I don't think so. It just doesn't complement. I mean, I haven't tried it, but of course, I tried soy sauce. I tried French fries, oh, and yeah. from my educated guess, it it doesn't work. It, it doesn't seem to work. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, frosties? That's a good. Yes. Comment. Oh well, actually, I dip my french fries to uh the uh, mocha frappuccino of mcdonald's <laughs> well that works i mean for, uh, uh, you know for some of you who haven't tried it you might find it a little bit nasty it's like oh you're putting it on a sundae or an ice cream or something but i don't know it works for me all right all right all right i'm not does judging it, does it work for you you haven't uh, tried it i tried it but you didn't like it i i it's it's, it's not like i don't like it it's just like Okay, I tried it. That's it. Oh, okay. I'm, not, I'm not gonna do it again. It's sweet and salty, so I think it. That's why it complements it. I don't know, man. At least for me. The next you thing know? you do is you wake up every morning making frappuccino. You put some fries in it. Well, I'm not totally. <laughs> but yeah, I probably am weird. You know. You're not weird. You're just unique. A uh, healthier alternative, would you say, sweet potatoes? Sweet potato fries, even uh, though it's not French fries, but. If you wanna, I yeah, guess, choose yeah. a healthier option, um, sweet, potato fries, yeah. sweet potato fries would be a good option, you know? Uh, I think just a couple of weeks ago, Joe um, offered me some sweet potato fries. I'm not a big fan, but of course I eat it. It's not a big deal. Yes, yeah, you, know? so you don't turn out someone giving you food. It's just rude. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't say no because I eat sweet potato. So, yeah. but if it's like zucchini fries, well, I'm definitely like gonna say no. <laughs> how you like it though? It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, again, I, I cannot compare them uh, these two. Mm -hmm. um, even though they're both deep fried, right? I still prefer French fry um, than sweet potato fries. But I can eat sweet potato fries if I'm being offered, you know? Yeah. 
those are our observances today guys we don't have any extra observances that we're going to be talking about um so moving on to today in history what happened in today in history so in 1960 we have john f kennedy nominated for presidency Ooh. so in la california here so it was a dsc SoCal. um he was a senator first yeah, before Massachusetts, be yes. becoming a president right um, but when he was not nominated for presidency by the Democratic Party convention, um, the his opponent or the uh, the the person being nominated—I don't want to say opponent because they're not really, you know, like they don't hate uh, each other, right? No, no, no. Competitor? No, no. Opponents, right? Opponent doesn't mean you hate each other. Oh, that's true. That makes sense. It, it was only, so it was I guess like we can use enemy. that word. Enemy. That means you hate each other. Okay, so I guess we can use the word opponent. Yeah, yeah, opponent so his fine. opponent was uh, opposite side. Yeah, also another senator, uh, Lyndon, B. Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson, and he was... He ended up being his vice president, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, he was... Uh, so, so Kennedy beat uh, Johnson, you know, Johnson from Texas. Um, the next day, Johnson was named Kennedy's running mate uh, by right. a unanimous right. vote of the convention. Right. And then four months later, November 8th, Kennedy won 49.7% of the popular vote in one of the closest presidential elections in U.S. history, surpassing by just a fraction of 49.6, so it's 0.1 difference, right? That that is really close. It it's like uh, I don't know. Uh, like what's, a what's a good comparison it's for like that? It's like a hundred thousand. It's like a tiebreaker, pretty much. It's you know. It's like like it's like what do you call it? It's like winning with a uh, thousand votes over like a million people my math is wrong but it's something mm -hmm. like that it's a really small margin but this time uh what do you call this what happened oh not not this time during his famous inauguration address uh -huh. or address kennedy was the uh, youngest candidate ever elected to be the president or to the presidency mm. again he was the youngest candidate okay not the youngest president so he was at least 35 mm -hmm. to be fair yes and he declared that, quote unquote, uh, the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans and appealed to Americans to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Exactly, Joe. There you go. I should know because I was born in this great country. Some it's a good reminder that sometimes we just, you know, as, as citizens of a country, we kind of mm. keep on just asking. Right, like right, right. I want this, I want this. Can you give me this? Can you give me that? But you have to understand the country is also comprised or is composed of communities. And you know the most important thing in our country, right? The you part is united. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There you go. Come together. That's united. And we are a colony. I mean, just look at the basic colony. Like let's say for ants, right? There, there's not a single ant that's saying, "Oh no, I just want to eat and all." Like for a greater purpose they all work together they all do their part they all work together to uh to make their colony survive yes so uh you know we have to do that as humans too yeah, yeah yeah that's true i believe that yeah there you go um additionally jfk and his family seemed to be the best fit at that time you know to represent the younger generations in this country yeah yeah um that may have also uh, played a huge role into his win. Because uh, you will always get, because people are born and they get to voting age mm -hmm. and you get more voters. And you want to appeal to the new voters because that's how you get more votes to win. Right. Because like you have old voters, they will always vote the same. But the new voters is the one you want to appeal to. Because mm -hmm. that's the one, those are a group of people, the demographics that will help you propel you to victory yes yes so you have to know you know your voting base demographics demographics and not really appease them but more of a align with their align it with their uh, ideology ideology yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. so well speaking of ideology he mm -hmm. also actively fought hard against communism around oh, the yeah, world yeah. back then yeah the so, red scare all that stuff about different ideology there you go yeah history of course yeah all right, next up. Oh, we, I forgot. We have another Today in History right here. 1930, uh, backtrack a few more years, you know. The first World Cup occurs. There you go. In 1930, the very first World Cup series happened. Um, at that time, France defeats Mexico 4-1, uh, mm. and the United States defeats Belgium 3-0, or 3-0. 
um, in the first ever World Cup football matches played simultaneously in host of a city Montevideo. in the host city Montevideo Uruguay right. or Uruguay. Uruguay. Um, the World Cup has since become the most the world's most watched sporting event. Hmm. So uh, if you guys are paying attention to their to their clothing, so you know how they have like longer shorts and you know like long sleeves still. Uh, I don't know. I just noticed. <laughs> there you go. And then the uh, the person in the black suit. I would think that's the, the referee. referee. Yeah. You know, very formal. Yeah. There you go. So uh, moving on. Notable figure born today. Professor X. Yes, and uh, Picard, right? Jean Luc Picard. Jean Luc Picard. Uh, happy birthday to Mr. Patrick Stewart, 1940. So again, uh, we just mentioned his famous um, characters mm -hmm. that he played. Well known. Uh, so, of course, you guys would definitely know him as uh, Jean-Luc Picard in Star Trek The Next Generation. TNG. Speaking of which, I think they're coming out with a movie for that. He has his own spin-off ready, just called Picard. Uh, Isn't that the movie? No, or is that a, a TV show? Like a TV show. Oh, that's a TV show. Yeah, Never it came mind. out like years ago. And then he also years. played uh, Professor Xavier or Professor Rex. He's a telepathic mutant. Yes. yes. He's uh -huh. also the... He's also, well, his name is Professor. He, he's the owner of the school for gifted and talented mutants, something like that. In the movie, yeah. No, no, well, in the comics too. No, I mean, yeah, in the comics, in the movie. Yeah. I'm just, because they might think, oh, in real life, <laughs> like, he what? has a school? Yeah. Maybe yeah. he does, but we don't know. No. But if he would teach, right, he'd probably teach uh, Shakespearean acting. Yes. He's very uh -huh. good at a Shakespeare play, the theater. I He's mean, these good. veteran actors, I would say, they have their perks, like their 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 best. They're talent. well trained, classically trained too. Yes, in uh, theater. Uh -huh. And the main difference between theater and movies, or you know, like because uh, you're you more this? relying on your acting skills and you know CGI. And there are less cuts. There are less per cuts. scene. There are less cuts per scene. So, so. you gotta go through each scene seamlessly. Yeah, because like when you think of movies, right? It's just parts of different uh, scenes and mm -hmm. they're patched it together during the editing process but for theater right it has to flow yeah, yeah exactly the transition has to flow so, so he's very well versed in this kind of uh, form of acting I don't know because I haven't seen uh, a, a theater yeah. or a theatrical yeah. play mm. personally you should but there should be a term for each sequence I would say act I think act break, yeah. yes so act. so act I mean, when you see when you see uh, the movie, when you see a movie, for example, some of these parts are divided into scenes yes. where, where they change angles and it's stuff like, like that, right? One scene you're in a cafe, then the the stage hand they move the back, and you're in the park. Mm -hmm. That's the change in the scene. One thing I noticed is those scenes are significantly shorter compared to acts when it comes to theatrical play. So. Right. Um, I because you want to focus on the actors, not the scene. Right. That much. I never appreciate well you know forgive me but i never appreciate theatrical plays before mm. uh, but now that i grew up and i guess became more mature i just now i started appreciating it's actually harder to be an actor in a theater yes yes yeah because again you're doing it live so your audience is going to be live uh so the window for making mistakes should be as tiny as a crack of glass none yeah, well none yeah yes. <laughs> so you know, you know, you don't have a. You have to memorize all your script, anyways. Mm -hmm. yeah, Especially no, musical. Imagine not musical. only your script, you have to memorize your uh, co-actors too, because you have to. You know, it's a dance. Mm -hmm. You can't dance with your dance partner. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, there you go. So again, happy birthday to uh, Mr. Mr. Patrick Stewart. Stewart. Is it is it Sir now? Sir pa Patrick Stewart. Is it? Isn't he like knighted? I think. Was he? I, I'm not sure. Pretty sure he was. That would be cool. Professor X being knighted. You know who his best friend is? Ian McKellen. McNeedle. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to the place of the week. We have a new place this week. Where I are we going? We are going to Mozambique. Mozambique. So we're going to talk about the national symbol, starting with African elephant. Now, the African elephant itself is a resilient mammal, and because of that, these strong animals became Mozambique's national animal. And does the representation too mm. you know it represents the resilience strength. strength endurance endurance there you go unfortunately when we uh, talked about elephants i believe this is not the first time we mentioned elephants because yeah. we had the thai elephant too and just like the thai elephant they their population is dwindling 
uh, suffered or was still was suffering yeah. uh, in the crease over decades due to deforestation, deforestation and Human. poaching. Poaching. Yeah, because you know tusks. I guess they look lovely from a lot uh, to a lot of people wanted to collect uh, it, they have these, get the ivory, they, they you have know? superstition that have some kind of like medicinal property. That is so messed up. I know. You know, there's, guys, way, there's ways of solving <laughs> health issues than just like mutilating an animal. Again, uh, I'm just saying this world is not just for ours to take. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a sure. lot of neighbor, neighbors, friends, and other creatures that are living here. So yeah, just a friendly reminder. Um, Anyways, uh, how the uh, these incredible animals or these elephants continues to survive despite its history of challenges. Uh, though its conservation status is endangered, these elephants receive protection um, today in various national parks and nature preserves in Mozambique. Yeah. So to be fair, yeah. you know there are some people who are not so good with animals, but we also have you know, good humans who are actually trying to protect them. You know, I always, it always amazed me how when we look into the universe or different galaxy, right? Uh, there's hardly any life. And then the one place that does have life, it has, it's teeming with diversity of life. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at the picture of the elephant, right? It doesn't do it justice until you see it in person. You see how it, big it is, how it's towering. Of course, it. the picture won't do it justice. Uh, yeah. But it's just amazing how these, Creatures cohabit. Well, yeah, the Earth uh -huh. with us, and we just take them for granted. Because, like I said, we uh, are part life, of a system. Life, yes, life is not easy to come by, and when life is such, you know, in such variety, you gotta appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Right. So yeah, instead of poaching elephants, guys, you gotta appreciate them. Come on. Right. All right. Next up, we have bell bean. Ooh, bell bean sounds like. Uh, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, my burrito it has bell pepper and some taco beans. bell bean, taco taco no, no, no. bell bean burrito. It has, it has bell pepper and frijoles. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay. Tell me about the bell bean. Uh, just a little information about the bell bean. I was actually trying to look for more information, uh, but this species usually grow as a small tree mm -hmm. and thrives in areas with lightly forested, such as fields. Mm. It is known to grow in riverine. Uh, fringes and rocky outcrops and uh, flowers are yellow so near near the rivers or near rocky uh, like near the, the base of like mountains like base of the mountains yeah. where there are rocky um, areas right there Interesting. Uh, the fruit it has a fruit and the fruit is a long capsule mm, basically so it's kind of like a like a pill capsule yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then for their traditional not national traditional uh, game that, Mkala, I love this game. Yeah, right? Uh, well, it's also called Wari, but I, I guess in uh, Mozambique, they call it Nchuva. Oh, Nchuva. Yeah. So it's basically You know like, how to play it? Yeah. Okay, you, there you, you go. You uh, plant the seeds, then you collect the seeds. Yeah, there are different variations. Ours were, uh, would be rocks too. Oh, no, actually, sh uh, shells. Shells. We use shells. Those, well, the concept is those, those, those represent seed, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it could be seeds, it could be rocks, it could be shells, but the concept of the game is basically um, what you're going to be doing. Well, first of all, it's a uh, two-player game, mm -hmm. right? So what you're going to do is two players will be facing each other, uh, and then they're going to be uh, placing two stones. Right. And each of, there's going to be two rows. Right. Two rows. So one row for you, one for, one for the other person. One side, other side, yes. To make a move, the player chooses a pit, which is where the uh, stones are. It's like a well. Yeah, w w yeah, but basically where the stones or rocks or, or, or shells are placed, in. are placed. So you grab that, and then you're going to the next put well, one. Drop one each next well. Counterclockwise. Yes. So, uh, f I guess from your right to left. Yeah, and then... Is it counterclockwise? I thought it was clockwise. Well, I guess it could be clockwise or counterclockwise. It, it was just this, if you guys are moving in the same direction. So but, yeah, but I guess the direction. concept was to drop one stone or shell or seed in one well or one pit yes you know at a time and then the last one if you only have one last and then you drop it on the a well a specific where, well you grab it, it again you grab everything in the shell you're only going to stop if you land into something with an empty right uh well or pit so yeah pretty cool a pretty cool game i, I remember playing it um 
I actually forgot what we call it in our country. But we have a different name. But yeah, it's mo mostly common. It's a basic known concept. As mancala. Yeah, it's a basic concept, but it's really fun, actually. Yeah, it's relaxing, too. I just like the sound. Yeah. yeah. Well, how do, uh, do you play it in, on the ground? Because uh, the picture kind of looks like uh, they're playing it on the like on the sand. Or oh, something. I play on my Switch. My Nintendo Switch. Oh, okay. Yeah. We have an actual... Mancala. Mancala... Uh, play set. Set, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we don't play it on the on the ground. Or something. Oh, nice. All right, stop of the day. Finally, our last letter. 26th letter of the alphabet. Letter Z. Z. Now, if you're going to ask me, JR, what's going to be your next theme? Well, I don't what know yet. What's your next theme, JR? I probably won't have any more uh, long theme, but we'll see. We'll see. But as of now, I'm just going to enjoy the last theme or the last letter part do, of do, do a, a number, long theme. Do a number theme. Number words, theme. Words with one letter. Words with two letters. Words with three letters. Words with four letters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. I can't. It's going to be hard uh, for four letters. It's hard with one letter. What are you talking about? Oh, you said, you said letters, not words. I was thinking words. Four words. That's going to be tough. You know, especially for the word of the day. All right. All right. Let's uh, rush through this. Animal of the day. We have Zebu. Oh, you found a better picture. Y yes. Zebu. I, I wanted to emphasize the back part because that's what the... Do you guys see the, the hump at the back? Yes. Right there. Yeah, that's what kind of makes a Zebu... Uh, a Zebu. A Zebu, yeah. <laughs> Like that's that's its feature. Yes, you know? the single feature. So the zebu is an animal that evolved from a now extinct wild species of cattle called the aurochs. Aurochs. Hey, the tail looks like a donkey. Oh yeah, I just noticed that. Uh huh. Looks but right. ain't, ain't, all cows, <laughs> wait, ain't all cows? Wait, ain't all cows a cow? <laughs> now I call it a cow. But don't they have that kind of uh, tail? I'm I pretty sure they I, did. I don't call it. I know what a cow looks like, but I don't know what the tail looks like. It's driving me crazy. It looks but like the, that. It looks like that. But the, the tail does look like a donkey. I know for sure. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Keep going. I was going to look it up. All right. It is estimated that they first appeared more than 8,000 years ago, somewhere in Southern Asia. Mm. Um, then they slowly spread out and reached yeah. Egypt. It, it looks like that. It did. Yeah. All right. It does. It does. All right. Around 4,000 years ago, the uh, zebu was actually the first type of domesticated cattle to 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 arise you know domesticated means they're uh, to they, help out in uh, human activity they live with much. human uh, they definitely live with in farms yes. you know or crops that's for sure yeah a separate uh, lineage later broke off and gave rise to all other domesticated cattle you know? oh, okay so it's like the, the cow like what yeah what sheep branches yeah or uh, I guess the yak because the yak are were domesticated too, Yakety, you know yeah. For for the Alpine area, Alpine, Alpine area, <laughs> Alpine. <laughs> I I turned it into adjective. Yeah. Um, the zebu was first introduced into the Americas in the 19th century, uh -huh. and it has been crossbred with numerous other uh, taurine cattle, or cattle, including the uh, this one I can pronounce, Charolais, I would say, which resulted into Charbay. Charbray, rather. Charbray. Sorry. The Angus. Charlay. Where where do you where do you, where do you hear the word Angus? Restaurants. Steakhouse. Restaurants, yeah. Burgers. Angus, right? I want there. burgers. I want burger with my fries, JR. Sure, why not? See, we gotta stop doing this in the morning. I got like I get hungry right oh, man. real quick. Okay, keep going. Here's well, here's the thing about observances though. A lot of them are food. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I, we, we observe the food. We can't eat it. Uh, I, just observe it. You know what next time? When you do observe it, so you have food, you have to have, put the food back oh, here. Oh, that's a good time. Yeah, you, you buy the food I, for me so I can, you know, What if it's something really it. specific? I can't I can't do that if it's something specific. Well, pick a observance that's really easy then. Like, you can make franks and beans. Make me franks and beans. Give me some fries. Uh, no. Because of its notable feature, which is, you know, the hump? Yes. Uh, sometimes uh, they are also called hump cattle. They kind of look like cattle. Yeah, look like cattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, next one, letter Z. What do you expect, Joe? A zucchini. Zucchini, yes. The word zucchini Zucco comes from corn. zucca so in Italian, meaning squash. And yes, zucchini is a squash. And again, this is something that I just learned very recently. I would say like five years ago. I didn't know zucchini was a type of squash, but it is, definitely. Uh, zucchinis were first brought to the United States in the 1920s by, you guess who, the Italians. Because again, the word zucchini came from an Italian word. 
Um, here's something that you might have not known. I don't know if you know this, Joe, but the flower of uh, the zucchini is edible. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay, there you yeah. go. Um, you know how I know that? It's my problem. Oh, that's cool. That was this cucumber guy. He had a little flower on top. Wait a minute, it's cucumber is different. It's not a zucchini. Oh yeah, I'm looking at the, <laughs> well, I'm looking at the difference between a zucchini and cucumber. They're they're d different. So yeah. zucchini is more smoother and shiny skin, and it's more greenish and uh, greenish yellow. Well, cucumber is more bumpy and darker green. And darker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was wondering why you know they look the same. Um, of course, um, since it's edible, um, we may be able to talk about its nutrients, vitamins, you know. Um, some of the nutrients, uh, the vitamins and minerals that are found, or nutrients that are found in zucchini may help prevent cancer and mm. heart diseases. But now, this is still an may. ongoing research. It's may. It's may. Yeah, that's why it's called May. Um, it's an ongoing research and uh, they still need more data to Data collect. to really make sure it does do that. But here's a uh, here's one thing that's for sure. Mm -hmm. You guys know that a zucchini has more potassium than a banana. Yeah, but bananas taste here. Well, yes. You you're not gonna see me walking around eating zucchini. And sweeter and sweeter. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, true. But it is a good alternative. A good well, not a good. I would say banana is a good alternative because no, no. it has more potassium. So you can put it in a. It's not like you're gonna eat it fresh. No. You can put it in a dish or salad. Actually, you can eat it fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. zucchini and salad. It really depends on the. The food you're eating. Right? Yeah. If it's a salad, you're not gonna put banana unless it's a fruit salad. So if your body's potassium is running low, a uh, zucchini could be a good source. Oh, <laughs> potassium. There you go. Okay. I mean, you can still eat banana. I know. Or maybe both. But you're like, oh no, I'm running out of potassium. Gotta get some fine zucchini. Zucchini. Is zucchini. <laughs> oh, you can fry zucchini. Yes, you can. Well, I mean, you can make it a zucchini sticks, bread and zucchini. Yeah. Zucchini fries. Oh, this that's song. what I was saying a while. Uh, I was talking to you a while ago. If you if you offered me zucchini fries you and said it. I'll take a pass, yeah, so. you're lame, Jerry. You I'm need so potassium. sorry, guys. Like, bananas. <laughs> I'll go with bananas. You, you, you <laughs> eat fried? Oh, I ride eat fried bananas. Yeah. You know we fried bananas too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I ride eat fried bananas. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, musical art of the day. We have zombie, zombie, Ugh. zombie, zombie. Yeah, 1994 by yours truly, the Cranberries. Uh, so, Zombie is a song by Irish alternative rock band The Cranberries and it was released uh, exactly on September 19, uh, 1994 um, as the lead single from their second studio album No Need to Argue, two weeks ahead of the album's release and the music critics have long recognized Zombie as the Cranberries, by the Cranberries as a masterpiece of alternative rock. Now there's a little bit um, a sad song. and uh, dark history of this song because this song was actually a protest song written in memory of two young victims who were killed in the 1993 Wa uh, Warrington bombings. Uh, their names were Jonathan Ball and Tim Perry. Mm. Uh, now on the bright side, the song was written by the band singer uh, Dolores O'Riordan and reached number one on the charts of Australia, Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany. Wow. And then recently, just recently, I'm talking about as recent as last year, yes. April 2020, it became the first song by an Irish band to surpass 1 billion views on YouTube. There you go. Because, you know, YouTube is the, the next basis of popularity. <laughs> so there you go. You got more views on YouTube, you're popular. As of May 2021, Zombie, um, or this song, Zombie, has been streamed 566 million times on Spotify and as of April 2020 has sold 778,000 uh, copies in United Kingdom. Wow. I mean, as far as the physical copy, I don't think it's going to be more because right now everything's digital or mostly digital now. So if it's you want to listen to it, YouTube, type the song. Right. It's not like go to the music store, buy the album. So you can. Yeah. I mean, you can if you're a collector. Yeah, yeah. If you collect it, yes. Uh, but again, I'm just saying, you know, for the vast majority, it's pretty much just going online and typing the name Streaming, of the song and listening to it. Listening to, yeah. So it's easier. Only. Good thing though is we can still track it. You know, like let's say in the YouTube, you know, you you can track how many views or how many people are listening listening to it or watching it. So word of the day, day we have zigzag. zigzag. It's a noun, and well, let me spell it for you. Z-I-G-Z-A-G 
ZIG, ZIG. It's basically a line or a course having a drop al alternate right and left turn. So Abrupt alternate right and left turn. So yeah. it's like, it's not like a curved turn, it's more like it's sharp. It's a hard, sharp. It's a sharp turn. Hard turn. A sharp it's a hard term, yeah. definitely. So and zigzag, you don't see wicking zigzag. You can zigzag when you're playing uh, dodgeball. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, I guess. Uh, you Someone throw it, you zigzag, you dodge it. But when you say zigzag, it has to be, uh, you're doing sharp turns at the same time moving from one direction to another. How about like, you know what in, uh, like in a go-kart, you zigzag. You dodge I the guess, pose. yeah. Uh -huh. like driving test, you zigzag. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a perfect. It's not gonna be a perfect uh, sharp turn, but yes. You can zigzag through crowds of people at the mall. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. It's more accurate, I guess. Yeah. Or to be more accurate, we have the Joe sentence right there. <laughs> Joe sentence. Joe traced a zigzag on the metal with his finger. So how would you do that? I just. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So, zigzag, and then finally the end of our episode. Tech trivia, letter Z, and something that we're using every day with you guys, Zoom. Oh, what is Zoom? Zoom video conference app. I never heard of that. Oh, you haven't? No. Oh, man. Too bad for you because you're using it. Uh, you're going to be using it today, too. <sighs> yeah. I mean, at this point of recording. <laughs> Anyways, did you guys know Zoom was created out of hatred for travel? That just makes a lot of sense because, you know, it's a video conferencing app software so basically you don't have to travel to uh to meet up with someone no you know you, you meet them up and virtually yes no matter how far you are you jump on zoom we're here that's right you're there founded by american entrepreneur eric you won you won you won thank you joe uh the zoom app was made due to eric's hatred for traveling so why does he hate traveling well uh the idea started when uh you won was a freshman in college in China. Um, his girlfriend lived 10 hours away by train. Yeah. So he would often think about ways that he could visit his girlfriend without having to travel. Mm. Well, that's not really visiting, is it? <laughs> without, if you don't travel, that's not really visiting. It's more like Virtually seeing. visiting. Yeah. He's like, not physically visiting, but he's there in spirit. I don't know. I, I don't think or you can still use the word visit. I would just say see, like, you know, or meet yeah, someone well, yeah, without, yeah. without going visit, over there. Visit really means you're in a... You're physically there. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as simple as it sounds, uh, those thoughts led to the creation of the Zoom video conferencing app. Hmm. Uh, to be fair, though, uh, Zoom was not the first one to do so. I mean, there's Skype already. Skype. Uh, it's all about uh, Yahoo Messenger. I remember Yahoo Messenger 1990s. Oh, my gosh. They even have like uh, Yahoo Rooms to, to hang out with, you know, people of the same interest. Yeah. Uh, they shut down already for uh, quite some time now. I think um, uh, Zoom was probably like, hey, you're far away. I'm going to Zoom close to you. That's a good concept of the name. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what so, the concept of the name is. You can also zoom out. <laughs> you know, you can also zoom out, right? I'm, I'm zooming out right now, guys. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of uh, some uh, some of these uh, video conferencing or messaging app, you know, uh, or rather video chatting messaging app in general, what were the ones you were using before, Joe? Skype. Skype. Mm -hmm. You you've been a solid Skype user yeah, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was using Skype because I was overseas. The, the, does AOL had a? Did they have like a AOL Video Messenger? Yeah. Did they have an, any video comp? No, like video so. messaging. I don't app? recall. All I know is Yahoo Messenger. Oh, sure. Google. Google had a lot of um, Google Meet iterations. Yeah, Google, Google. I don't know what's wrong with Google. They always change. It's, it's basically their marketing strategy. I mean, it doesn't sound so catchy. MSN you know? Messenger. MSN, yes. But that's more like there's Skype now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I else? guess you can call FaceTime a messenger. Definitely a messenger. FaceTime, only strictly yes. for Apple devices. Yeah. The Apple ecosystem. Um, well, there's more now. Uh, there's a... Uh, we Was it WeChat? No. WeChat. No. Am no I right? WeChat. No, not WeChat, huh? So, yeah, there you go. That's our uh, episode for today, guys. Mm. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, I have to come up with a new theme starting next week. Not on Thursday because, you know, Thursday's more like a random kind of thing. Right. So, there you have it. Thank right. you for joining. Cool, 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 cool. Hope We're you like it. Done. Hope you learned something new. Awesome. Don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discussed in the comment section below. Below. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And by the way, guys, Joe is my co-host. 
I, I introduce you at the last part of the show. Isn't it nice? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Joe. Uh, it's kind of like a mystery that you already knew already. It's not a mystery if you already knew it. That's what I'm saying. It's, <laughs> it's ironic that you introduce me at the end. Ironic! How's, it, how's the introduction we do at the end? Uh, post intro? No, it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. Anyways, guys, we'll cut it off to uh, here now. See you guys so, tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. See you guys in Zoom. Yeah. And yeah, there you go. Bye. Bye. <laughs>